So now we're gonna take a look at some use cases for step functions. And these are actually cases that I've used. And it's also convenient that they show up in the AWS documentation, uh, because if you do wanna use them, they have all the instructions there. So first we're gonna look at manage a batch job or Fargate container. These are technically two different use cases, but they're so darn similar, I group them together. Uh, and so on the left-hand side here, uh, we have a, um, a state machine defined in step functions. And the idea is that you submit a batch job to AWS batch. Uh, if the job fails or succeeds, it notifies, notifies via SNS, uh, and then it ends. Okay, so there isn't a whole lot of logic here, but it's a great way to keep track of the status of a job to see whether it's failed or succeeded. Um, and you can kind of see an idea of where these um, services are being used. Then you have the case with a Fargate container. So it's pretty much the same process, except now we're replacing AWS batch with a Fargate container. So run a Fargate task. If the job fails or succeeds, notify via SNS. Uh, and uh, we could make this even a th like a third use case where we replace Fargate with an ECS task. So there's a lot of reusability with this one. and It's very simple. All right, so here's another use case I've actually used on Exam Pro when I had to work with a, a large uh, record set and I needed to perform something on each uh, row in the database. So the idea here is you load up a DynamoDB table of all the uh, items you want to perform operations on. And what it's gonna do is it's going to pull out each uh, uh, record or uh, row or item and it's going to perform operations on it. And so the idea is uh, it's going to read a message from DynamoDB, and then we're gonna use, we're gonna queue up an SQS. So it's gonna use first in, first out. So it's gonna do each one in order. And as it processes each one, it's going to um, uh, remove it from the actual DynamoDB table until the entire table is reduced to zero. So that's just a, 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 another method that you can use step functions for. For step functions, it is really important that you learn the different use cases, uh, and there's a lot of different combinations. So, uh, you know, I definitely encourage you to go and read through all of these uh, so you have more ideas in your mind. And then when you're taking the exam, uh, you can see when step function is a good fit for a scenario because it does a lot of things. Um, so, you know, here on the step functions use cases, they actually have some nice visual diagrams. So they have one on transcoding media files. Um, so that's a good one. Then they have sequential batch processing. We have one for sending messages from an automated workflow. So there's quite a few here and you definitely want to go and read through every single one uh, here. Another place is if you go to the documentations and it's going to repeat uh, some of the things there. Actually, not a lot of repetition now that I'm looking at it. Um, but you can go through here, and this is actually more for implementation. So you can see, and they'll actually give you the example of the state machine code. So, you know, for study, I strongly recommend you read through all these use cases and just look at the syntax here, or just try to go run one yourself. Um, but yeah, just a little add to this section.